Hello, this is Noseman from the Maxon training team. And in today's quick tip, I'm going to show you how to automatically rotate the wheels of any vehicle in order to rotate properly, depending on the distance traveled. In this simple scene, I have this cube, which could be your vehicle body, two cylinders for wheels, and uh, the whole thing is using an aligned to spline to move on this spline. As you can see, it's just moving along. Now, one more thing I've done is I've used an espresso tag to make sure that the wheel radius is raising the whole thing up at the same amount. So the wheel is always touching the ground. So if I go and select both wheels and increase the radius, the whole thing goes up and down. Excellent. This is our baseline setup. Now I can create a new espresso tag, right click programming espresso. And what we need to do here is we need to rotate. So I'm going to drag the wheel in here and uh, define which axis, and it's the B. You can see the B axis is the one we're going to roll. I'm going to drag this over here, and now we're going to drive this with some parameter. The parameter we need is how much this has traveled. And uh, the easiest way to do that is uh, with the wheel selected, you go to the MoGraph and you create a tracer object. Now bring the tracer all the way down here, go to the object, let's close this for a second, and make sure that the trace vertices is off. Now what's going to happen is as the wheel moves, it creates a spline which is equal to the distance that this wheel is traveling, and it grows as the vehicle moves. I'm going to go to my espresso setup I have on the wheel, and I'm going to drag in the tracer. In order to read that length, I need a spline node, and I'm going to go here and expose the object and connect this over here where it says object. And I'm going to go to the little red output and find the length. And I can double click here to get rid of that. The length is going to give us the length of the tracer, therefore the distance traveled for that wheel. I also need the wheel's radius, and I'm going to go and drag the wheel in here, select the wheel, and go to the radius and drag the radius over here. Let's create now the relationship between the radius and the distance traveled. For this, we're going to use a range mapper. And the, the range mapper is going to take this length as an input. And uh, I'm going to go here and output radians, because there is a very specific relationship between the radius of a circle and uh, the amount of rotation in radians. And what I need to do is go to the range mapper input upper and uh, control double click to maximize this and put the radius in here. And the final stage for the setup is to set the output to one. So we are gonna rotate one radian for every amount of distance equal to the radius. And let's drag this in here and see what happens. I'm going to pull this down here and press play. And you will see it goes the opposite direction. That's not a problem. Go to your range mapper and reverse it. And let's take a look at this again. And the setup is ready. And uh, despite the radius of the wheel, it will always work properly. And all you have to do now is copy the same setup to every other wheel you want to rotate. If you enjoy our quick tips, please like, comment, subscribe, and enable notifications so you never miss another quick tip.